What's up everyone? We're going to talk inflation, not monetary inflation, physiological inflation. We want to get uninflated. We want to feel better. Inflammation's weird because you need inflammation. It's your body's natural reaction, but how much inflammation do you really need? Much like everything else, there's a balance. How do we get uninflamed though? Being less inflamed means performing better. Inflammation is tied to illness. It's tied to heart disease. It's tied to cancer. It's tied to even depression. Sometimes inflammation is a chicken or the egg situation. So I'm in here working out, getting swole, getting yoked, which comes from an egg comes from a chicken. See how I brought that full circle? If I'm working out, I know to expect inflammation. I know that I'm going to tear up some muscle tissue and I'm going to get some inflammation. That's why I get sore. What I mean by whether or not chicken or the egg type of situation is going on. So let's say you don't work out and you get the flu or you frequently get colds or you frequently get sinus infections. Were you inflamed just out of homeostasis in your body? deficient in something, vitamin D, had a ton of oxidative stress. You're very stressed at work. That causes inflammation. Then you get a cold. Then you get sinus infections. It could all be linked. So what I did first was I took a shower. I took a shower, because I like to shower. When people think that you need to eat right after you work out, you don't. Studies that show you can eat, you can get your protein, let's just say, up to 24 hours after you work out and you'd still be fine. The point is that I like to shower, get some more blood to the gut, because when you're working out, the blood's going to the extremities. Shower, take a second, relax, get some more blood into the gut, then I start my food process. This is about inflammation. What I have here are broccoli sprouts. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I really like sprouts. I've always liked them, but there's a special purpose why I've been adding them to my diet. The purpose is to get something going in my body called sephoraphane. Ooh, fancy word. You like that, don't you? Sephoraphane. In order to make the sephoraphane in your body, you need to have good gut health and you combine two things together. I'm trying to get the glucoraphanin in the broccoli sprouts to mix with something called myrosinase in my gut. I'm trying to help that happen to create the sephoraphane, or healthy live bacteria that's in food, specifically live food, spe specifically that's in food that's fermenting. I'm eating the broccoli sprouts the young broccoli to get more of the glucoraphanin. The mature broccoli doesn't have as much glucoraphanin and I need the glucoraphanin to mix with myrosinase in my gut in order to make sephoraphane. So that's why I'm mixing the two. That's why I'm putting healthy fermented food mixed with this lovely green, cruciferous green at its young stage. The sephoraphane is the whole point here. There have been great studies done on it that show it can reduce inflammation. Above and beyond reducing inflammation, they've done cancer studies. Now, you're going to find sephoraphane supplements on the market. Not the same. There are a few that respected scientists would recommend. I wouldn't even bother looking for them. They're not alive. There's nothing alive about it. This is fresh. Again, alive, fresh. It makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference in the quality of the glucoraphanin that you're going to get, right? The amount that's in there. But also makes a difference in how your gut is going to accept all of it. So don't look for a supplement on it. Try and get the real thing. If you absolutely can't stand the way sprouts taste, broccoli sprouts, which, you know, again, to me, I like the taste, they're crunchy, there's a nice texture to it. Eat the cruciferous vegetables at the more mature stage. Eat spinach, eat kale.
eat cauliflower. But this is essential. The, the sephoraphane is the key and that's what you're looking to get and you're gonna get most bang for your buck here. You can keep eating vegetables all day. You can try and fill your body up with them. I like to eat meat, I eat everything. A balanced diet is important. You can go on and on and on looking for supplements. I'm trying to look for the things that are gonna have the most bang for their buck in terms of anti-inflammation because I don't wanna eat 50 bazillion things. I don't wanna take 50 bazillion pills. I don't wanna do that. It gets expensive, it gets annoying. You have to remember to take it on vacation with you. you have to remember to take them with food. It's just annoying. I'd rather have real food. So, first anti-inflammatory lesson and possibly sits at number one or number two in terms of importance and priority of anti-inflammation. Nice greens, broccoli sprouts. Mm -hmm.